Hey everybody, PCB Junkie back with another video. As you can see, right in front of me is another arcade monitor universal chassis. And this is another one of those uh, Way uh, clones. I guess uh, it's a little bit different than the one that I had used in my other video with the uh, centipede arcade cabinet that I had modified this one actually looks a little bit better I'm not uh, sure about the components uh, I'll I'll show you a couple things uh, like for example here this resistor right here in the other one is just uh, it's just a bare resistor it's it is standing on the on the side like this but it doesn't have this nice heat shield around it that uh, keeps it steady and uh, what I wanted to do uh, today is just basically take this thing and uh, play around with it. Uh, see if I can uh, figure out uh, why this thing has a bunch of problems uh, uh, with uh, quality, with video quality. Uh, two things mainly come to mind. One is the the blooming artifact that I uh, showcase in, in my other video. And also uh, another one is the washed out colors that people normally complain about. But uh, before we get into that, uh, I got some bad news. Unfortunately, this chassis is in fact dead. Since this thing is actually dead, I figured maybe I'd spend a little bit of time in this video just uh, going over the basic uh, troubleshooting that I would normally do in a case like this and uh, try to fix this. I don't believe this is going to be very difficult, so hopefully this video will also help uh, somebody in a similar situation. I'll just show you the type of troubleshooting that I normally do to figure out uh, problems and, and fix problems with, uh, with arcade monitors and just TVs in general. Mind you, I don't have a, a lot of experience on this subject. This is not my uh, typical thing, but uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to fix this. So. Let me give you a, a little bit of a background story to this. I acquired this chassis from uh, a fellow arcade hobbyist uh, by the name of Ross. Uh, thank you, Ross, for donating this. Yes, this was actually a donation. Uh, he did uh, give it to me for uh, just for experimenting and uh, trying to get it fixed. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, Ross said that uh, when this was powered on, it uh, it produced high voltage you could hear the high voltage but uh, it never generated any anything on the screen and there was simply no video and this is all we know now he suspects this has something to do with the vertical deflection circuit which would be right here behind this heatsink uh, but uh, I know this chassis well enough uh, from experimenting with it before to know it's probably not that uh, uh, for example uh, in my other experiments with with these, I actually had uh, reversed the horizontal and the vertical uh, yoke connectors. And uh, as you know, the horizontal is actually uh, quite a bit lower in terms of resistance and it requires a whole bunch of uh, more current to operate and uh, it, that chassis didn't blow at all. Uh, it had actually no problem even even driving that uh, that uh, vertical section the way it was, which was actually the horizontal section at that time. So I'm pretty sure it's not that. And in fact, if if the vertical does blow, it still uh, would normally produce some video, right? So so I think uh, I think we're not gonna we're not gonna dive right into this section right here. I'm more concerned with the typical type of failure. Uh, when there's no uh, picture whatsoever and that would be in the horizontal section so we're gonna have a look at this uh, HOT the high output transistor and we're gonna have a look at the circuit right here we'll look at the power supply as well as that could be an issue also and then uh, if that doesn't produce anything we'll uh, just keep on going until we find it I, I don't think it like I said I don't think it's gonna be an issue uh, let's have a look at this guy first that would be my first suspect right there so as expected uh, I did measure the resistance across the pins and uh, I do suspect that there's something wrong with with that transistor so 
just a, a couple words maybe in addition to that normally uh, the output of this transistor goes through the windings of the flyback and measuring the resistance is not really um, gonna tell you much uh, uh, well, it may not be conclusive, uh, is what I'm saying, because uh, it, it will appear to be shorted out unless you have a, a good multimeter and it can go down to like several digits of accuracy. You may not be able to tell, but I I just see that it's shorted across pretty much all of the pins, which is not which is not normal. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull this thing out of the chassis and we're gonna basically measure it. Uh, when it's not connected to anything and I, I believe we're gonna we're gonna see a short uh, across those pins but uh, let's just confirm that uh, I'm gonna put the camera down pull that thing out and then we'll come back and measure it all right so this thing is finally out of the chassis and yet yeah, sure enough um, pins are shorted across uh, well the entire thing in fact uh, let me see here no this side is this side is okay now it's four ohms this way. It's four ohms this way. Yep, and this. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's like uh, dealing with the camera and also uh, holding the probes. It's not exactly the easiest thing in the world, but uh, yeah, this is shorted. This is like less than one ohm in both directions. So yeah, so this thing, this thing is definitely screwed up. Now. Um, what I would say also is that uh, this may not be the only issue, right? Because, I mean, this shouldn't just blow on the first try. There's something else probably either driving this thing wrong or something else may have potentially blown. I hope it's not the fly, uh, the flyback transformer because then we're pretty screwed. But uh, I'll trace back. Uh, I'll, I'll look at whatever's driving this and see if there's any other issues. It's uh, it's very possible that this thing was okay until it was driven for the first time and it just, uh, instead of pulsing it, it was just kept on until it fried. So that's, well, that's, that's one possibility we're going to have to exclude, right? Let me uh, put this away. Let me go back to the chassis. We'll trace back um, that driving circuit and see if we can find anything there as well. Just to be on the safe side. And sure enough, uh, there's something wrong there as well. So uh, that particular transformer that you see there in the middle of the screen that actually is responsible for driving that um, HOT, but um, there's some uh, other transistors there, some medium power transistors that are driving that transformer and those things are suspect as well at least the one on the right so same issue uh, when I measure across those uh, pins uh, they appear shorted like in in a way that's different because again uh, these actually drive that particular transformer so they will appear to be shorted anyway just the resistance really across all the pins doesn't line up with what I'm expecting so uh, I'm gonna take the one on the right, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna measure that outside of the chassis and uh, I think we'll run into the same issue as before. And sure enough we have the same problem here as well so measuring pins across uh, appears to be short at least these two I don't know if this is the base or you know, I probably should have marked which way this was mounted in the chassis. <laughs> I didn't do that and the chassis doesn't appear to be labeled. Well, that's that's gonna be fun, but uh, I'll figure that out. Uh, no worries. So yeah, this side is uh, is definitely is definitely screwed up, uh, shorted. Uh, I'm getting like one ohm of resistance, right? Both directions, yeah. Yep, uh, okay, uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. So we found two issues. Now I'm gonna, uh, again, just gonna trace back to see if anything, um, else is wrong there's not much else that's left but you know just uh, just to make sure we better confirm because no point in replacing these parts only to have them fry again right so uh, yeah let me go back and, and have a have another look all right so I checked the remaining portion of the circuit right here I checked 
pretty much everything that needs to be checked here. I checked the, all the diodes, that one right there, that transistor on the left, the smaller transistor over here. I checked the, the power supply section diodes just in case. Um, I checked uh, that transistor and there's a couple diodes there as well as there. And uh, I checked pretty much all of the diodes and transistors that uh, could potentially cause an issue. And I, I just didn't find anything. Um, and the way I did it was um, both with the ohmmeter uh, reading, make, making sure that there's uh, no shorts between uh, each pin and also with the diode reading for diodes and transistors as well. So, you know, as long as you get your like 0 0.6, 0 0.5 or whatever, 0.7, volt uh, drop across a diode or a transistor you should be okay so so that all looks okay does it guarantee anything does it guarantee that there are no issues elsewhere no but uh, I'm fairly confident that uh, we can just start replacing uh, that transistor right there and that one and uh, I'm gonna say that that is probably all that we need to do here but of course like with everything else we're gonna have to test that theory and make sure that we're on the right track so I'm gonna now uh, go away and uh, order those parts I don't think I have any replacements and then we'll come back in a bit and uh, have a look see if we can actually get this thing to come on meanwhile okay one uh, one thing of interest right here now this is another chassis that I have this one is still in the box I haven't even unpacked it so basically the same thing as this one that I'm fixing but uh, have a look at this thing right here okay so for example with this I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to show you this properly now so let's uh, just have a look at this this is a, a C2688 transistor and these ones here are 2752 so they're, uh, I guess they're just using whatever parts are available at that time. And you can also clearly see this with this particular capacitor right there versus that one right there. That's a little different. And of course, I'm pretty sure that one is used. That one's been recycled. And that's really the case with my other chest that I have mounted in the cabinet. This one, however, seems to be brand new so you know whatever's available at the uh, Shenzhen market I guess that's what they're using but uh, yeah that that's uh, that's pretty good so that gives me a, a few options as far as um, replacement values I think these are just general purpose um, medium power transistors and uh, pretty much anything should do over there and uh, as far as the HOT goes I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you that clearly, but this this one is the same model as that one right there that's uh, has been removed. So okay, so that's it. That's just a couple things that are I thought were interesting, and uh, like I said, I'll go and uh, get those parts now, and uh, we'll replace them in a bit. Eventually. All right. So this is now a couple of weeks later. I got a bunch of new transistors that I ordered this is the HOT and here we have the other one that we're going to be replacing from over here and uh, in fact I've got a bunch of other ones too I got these big hefty ones uh, and these ones right here and then there's a, a bag of more transistors over there so basically the idea is going to be that uh, I'll be experimenting with this so first we're going to put the exact replacements back in and we're going to get a baseline of what's happening and then we're going to try the other ones with some measurements to kind of guide us uh, as far as where we need to go all right so the first step is going to be just to replace the one that's broken over there with this one here and then that one right over there with this one and then we're going to see if this thing comes back to life now that the parts in question have been replaced so we replace the transistor over there and also the HOT now that we've done this I have also checked pretty much everything I could easily check uh, all the diodes I checked uh, some of the capacitors 
main ones for shorts and I think this thing is ready to go so let's take this chassis let's pop it into my cab there with the uh, 25 inch tube that I modified specifically for these and uh, let's see if we can blow this thing all right got this chassis in the cab this is the centipede cabinet that I modified earlier specifically for for these chassis right here and over there for testing I have one of my JAMA test adapters yeah sorry about the lighting I'm wearing one of those uh, head mounted uh, flashlights uh, otherwise there's not gonna be enough light for me to see properly so yeah just bear with me while we do this and uh, now that this is uh, sitting here on a stool you know it's not the best possible place for it but just want to have it uh, loose and uh, be able to access it uh, easily you know flip it and uh, have access to the bottom of the board so we can do a little bit of testing I figured this should be good enough so there it is it's sitting on a stool now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flick on the switch and see if this thing comes to life all right here we go actually probably the best thing is to just uh, look at it this way all right again apologize about the lighting but uh, it is what it is all right here we go all right I can hear the uh, deflection yeah, we do have glow, so that's pretty good. Okay, I think this thing is uh, is finally back being alive. Okay, let's have a look at the front. The tester is working. Let me just see what we get on the screen over here. Oh, hello. Yep. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit of uh, streaking there, but uh, nothing that can be adjusted. Yeah. There's some issues there, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, so yeah, you see those bumps on top? That's the uh, problem with the bloom. Whenever there's a bright color that passes through, it makes that a little hump. But anyway, we'll uh, yeah, we'll we'll certainly have a look at these issues right here. Oh, since we're on the subject, let me show you exactly what I mean with these colors. Uh, this is something I want to be able to deal with. It's not so clear on the camera, but uh, maybe you will be able to see it too. When the color first appears, it's quite bright, and then it kind of loses its brightness a little bit. Not sure if that's very clear here. Maybe this is a better way to to show this. You see how when the colors pass, and uh, the brightness of the screen changes, some of the colors may disappear or they may change color. It's because the oversaturation of the of the uh, CRT causes the colors to kind of fade or wash out. So this is it's very clear when you see it here. All right, you can see the colors changing. Yeah, that's 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 not good, right? So we'll try to address this. We'll we'll experiment a little bit and see if uh, see if we can get that fixed up at least a little bit. Uh, see if we can improve it somewhat. All right, here's a schematic for a model 429H from Weiya. Now. This chassis isn't exactly this, but the schematics uh, I found are pretty similar. Um, I verified already a couple points, including the the numbering of the parts. It all seems to match up there. There's some extra parts in this one. Just uh, to keep in mind, if you're going to be using a schematic, make sure that uh, uh, you're aware. But uh, other than that, these are... Uh, these are pretty similar and uh, quite handy to have because it's just I wasn't able to find the schematic for the original chassis that I have the HL uh, 25 or whatever it is anyway there's a couple things I want to focus on here so number one the B plus right uh, as you can see it's uh, supposed to be set to 110 so we're gonna have a look at this and uh, then the uh, voltage regulation in a couple of uh, spots so basically 
uh, right here, which is part of the B plus. We're gonna have a look at this capacitor here to make sure that it's adequate. And then uh, I actually suspect that the problem may be here. Um, just based on how the colors are behaving, I believe what's actually happening is that uh, if red is oversaturated, then red will get washed out. If blue is oversaturated, then blue will get washed out and it will not affect the other colors. I, I think, I'm not 100% sure. So the problem may actually be in here. Uh, so just to confirm, I'm also gonna have a look at this voltage, the stability of this voltage right here. And then we're gonna look at some of the capacitors like this one here that feeds, uh, sorry, it's this one here that feeds this circuit right here on the neck of the tube. All right, so uh, the test is gonna be, I'm gonna use my tester again. We're gonna put on the bloom test, which is that box that uh, gets filled in with uh, pure white. And we're gonna have a look at these voltages here. We're gonna have a look at this one and then uh, the one over here and then up there. And uh, let's see if we can find uh, any change, any significant change. I mean, uh, maybe a few percent is uh, is acceptable, of course. I mean, these these do kind of, uh, uh, you know, change. Uh, the voltages will change with the brightness, of course. Uh, it's just the way it works. And, um, you know, we're just, we're looking for any significant uh, change that could potentially be causing these colors to get washed out. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go back to the chassis again and then we'll start poking around all right so since I'm gonna be adjusting the B plus voltage uh, right there with that knob uh, again apologize about the lighting conditions it's just uh, it's a crappy situation I understand but uh, that's all I can do at the moment so anyway uh, as you can see I already marked a couple points on this chassis where you can uh, do the measurements so the ground is actually any of these large heat sinks. Uh, this one is the large one here, is uh, covered, there's some sort of uh, insulation on it. Uh, so if you uh, if you use that, make sure you use a, an edge. Oops, I almost dropped my multimeter here. Uh, <clears throat> everything is on an angle of, and about to fall off, but yeah, so uh, use some sort of a sharp edge. Uh, this one is pretty much fully exposed and uh, they're safe to touch. I've verified this with my own body. Um, so yeah, uh, what you wanna do then for the ground is you take your ground lead and uh, it's a very awesome spot right here. You just shove it in here and uh, it stays right there. And then the other one, you basically have to get between this heat sink right here and uh, this resistor and this resistor is super hot it will burn up your probes as you can see right there I already did take off a chunk off of my probe right there so learn from my experience anyway and uh, yeah oops we'll just uh, touch that and we have 111 which is pretty close to what we should have so I guess this was already set correctly from the factory so we'll leave that be um, actually I want to do another experiment um, here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this uh, tester to the uh, bloom test and uh, I'm gonna watch the B plus voltage with an oscilloscope and see if it uh, changes significantly while the screen switches from uh, nearly empty or black to uh, uh, white, right? So that'll be a pretty decent test to kind of establish whether voltage regulation on the power supply side is an issue or not. So let's do that. All right, so I got the probes of the oscilloscope attached to the B plus voltage as you can see it's registering uh, about 110 volts um, let's change the setting here to give us the minimum and the maximum okay so we'll do let's see here the max and the min 
Okay, so we got minimum and maximum 110, from minimum 108 to 112. Okay, so that's the baseline. That's just with the uh, text running on the screen of the tester. So I'm going to go ahead and change the test now to the boom box. There it is. Okay, well, let's have a look. Let's see what the oscilloscope says now. Yeah, so the line does move. It definitely doesn't move very much at all. Yeah, I would say that the voltage does increase by, looks like about 2 volts. So that's not really significant, right? I don't think this is something we need to worry about. And uh, let me do one more thing here. Let's have a look at the... Uh, where is it? Uh, AC coupling. Let's see how much that actually jumps around. Uh, change the voltage per division. Yeah, so it does change by about two volts, one and a half, I guess, at the peak. Yeah, I don't know if this is something uh, to be concerned with, so maybe this right here is not the issue. Okay, we're back at the cabinet again. I have my probe, my oscilloscope probe now hooked up to a resistor at the neck of the tube. Uh, resistor is hooked up to the 100 180 volt line that feeds that circuit and uh, of course I have my ground which wouldn't reach normally extended via this uh, alligator clip extension to my favorite place to get ground from this heat sink right there and uh, if we look at the oscilloscope now let me just uh, put this back on DC coupling and uh, it's pretty much maxes up my settings on the scope. I can only get 50 volts per division, right? Uh, so if we look at that line right there, you can see it's hovering around 180 volts, which is exactly what the schematics tell us it should be doing. But uh, it does jump around quite a bit. You can pretty much tell when it dips. That uh, test that we're running, which is the box that gets filled in the bloom test you can tell when it fills in with white that line does drop and it drops uh, by a fair amount I don't know if it's a, the actual issue but certainly it's something that uh, probably should be looked at and if we put the scope back to AC coupling we can see the changes uh, are a bit more dramatic this is 2 volts per division so the line does uh, jump up and down Probably six, uh, six or more volts peak to peak. So, yeah, we are gonna have to have a look at that capacitor that uh, is responsible for smoothing this out. So maybe just increase the value a little bit and see if that makes any difference. And then, if not, um, then we'll we'll experiment a little bit with the HOT and see if that that does anything. I'm still at the back of the cabinet, just poking around at the neck of the tube with my oscilloscope. And I found something fairly interesting that I think is worth reporting. So, uh, I have the probe, my oscilloscope probe, hooked up currently to the R input of the tube. And um, based on what I'm seeing here, this section right here, um, based on the amount of red that's fed in from the input side, so this is our input, uh, this gets fed through a series of amplifiers, you would adjust your gain right here with these, uh, these pots, and then that's fed directly into the neck of the tube, and uh, that's then amplified with these three transistors but actually inverse amplified right so if the color is off then uh, the input to the tube would be low and if the uh, color is on then 
the uh, sorry so if the color is on then uh, you would get uh, a low voltage here and then if the color is off you would get uh, pretty much close to a full 180 volts right mm -hmm. since this transistor would be off well the voltage the 180 would just flow through these two resistors and end up at the tube right so what I was expecting to see of course is when I have a full screen of red I should see a steady signal fed into the R um, line of the socket right well that's not really the case so have a look at this right here so what I'm uh, thinking is happening at the top we have our full 180 volts and then um, I guess there are pulses that bring this down and uh, based on what I'm seeing the uh, the color actually comes on at about 50 volts or less right maybe uh, around 60 or so so like when it's 74 or whatever that's actually uh, the color is not on right so this test cycles through the three different colors we get a full screen of red, we get a full screen of uh, green, then blue, then black, and then the cycle begins again with a white screen, right? So, if you look at this, you'll be able to tell when the white and the red comes on, right? When the, the line drops to right about here, just now, and again, this will be the red portion. And now, colors are turned off, the red is for the green and the blue portion of the full screen test so what's interesting to see is that the line actually starts off low and then creeps back up again which is exactly what we've been seeing with the colors they start off strong and then they kind of get washed out as time goes on so yeah that, that pretty much uh, confirms that it is the signal fed into the back of the uh, the neck of the tube that is causing this right because um, I was just expecting to see a steady line but no you can see that creeping up right so if we go now to the front I'll show you exactly what I mean right so you can see that the initial color is pretty strong and then it kind of gets washed out right away right So, yeah, I think that's the cause of the issues that we're seeing here. So, I don't know what the uh, what the problem would actually be. I don't think it's the input voltage because that 180 at the top is pretty consistent. So, I'll, I'll check in a couple places. First, I'll check at the input side and then we'll maybe have a look at the uh, transistors or that uh, circuit to see if there's any way we can improve this and um, I think I'll do that before doing anything else alright so I have the probe still hooked up to the back of the neck but uh, at this time it is hooked up to the input of this transistor right there at the base of it and uh, I've been uh, trying to see what exactly is going on but um, as you can see that line is still jumping around it's still going up and down somewhat if you look at the uh, minimum and maximum values you can see them shifting all over the place right so that's uh that's a bit suspect so then uh i started probing at the input side here as well and uh, i saw the same issue so now i'm thinking that uh, the problem is actually with this part of the circuit and I want to demonstrate something to you uh, just put my light on here now I'm going to uh, short that uh, AC coupling capacitor right here so I'll just stick uh, have a diode here and just stick it in here and go between the legs and that should hopefully short it out now if we look at the signal right now you can see it doesn't jump around as much now let me just make sure that this is shorted indeed 
it's uh, especially the bottom of this seems to be pretty steady so I think this is exactly what's happening I think the uh, AC coupling is just uh, inadequate here so I want to show you what happens with the actual screen so before right as the colors passed they would change and you, you will still be able to see this especially on the green and the blue uh, bars but it doesn't happen anymore with the reds now that the red is shorted right so I think I think this is what's happening I'm going to change those capacitors I'm gonna increase the values I'm gonna see if that makes a difference to the colors but uh, I think uh, I think this is probably what's going on here so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and uh, see what the results of this look like back at the workbench again so these guys right here these uh, electrolytics I believe these are 47 47 microfarad uh, 25 volts I'm gonna replace these with uh, something a little bit bigger so we'll put in a 220 220 microfarads at 25 volts and uh, see if that makes any difference at all and if it does uh, hopefully they're not too big and uh, we'll still be able to adjust the chassis to make it look nice in all various conditions so uh, I'm going to heat up my soldering iron my desoldering iron that is and uh, I'm gonna pull these guys out and uh, have a pack of uh, crappy Chinese 220s right there that'll uh, be perfect for this purpose all right so let me go ahead and replace them and then I'll come back uh, and show you the end result get the old caps out of there and popped in these new ones here world renowned Chang brand well I mean it goes uh, well with the rest of the chassis doesn't it so yeah I think uh, I think this is it um, I have a good feeling about this let's uh let's pop this thing into the cabinet now and uh, see what we get so with the uh, new capacitors and the chassis put back into the cabinet we're gonna run a couple tests I'm gonna show you guys the result here so if you remember this test before and I'll try to put uh, a side-by-side -side here to show you uh, again not so clear on the camera itself because the camera does uh, you know color balancing and all that but you can see that uh, even though it's still doing it the colors initially start up bright and then gradually fade out it the process is much more gradual it's much slower and uh, the colors are in fact a lot brighter um, now if I put the other test on here this one you'll be able to see that the colors don't change as much I mean they still do but it's it is just uh, it's like night and day almost right um, there are issues for example when there's like a light blue or yeah like there they do fade out but it's it is much slower than before for sure right there there's another bar so this should have been a, a a dark red and a dark blue and a dark green which uh, wasn't quite uh, bright enough but certainly um, it made a big difference I think okay so so that's that's one thing now have a look at this um, before this thing wasn't as uniform as it is now now it's barely actually changing I think what's happening here is that since the capacitors have increased the uh, the actual signal strength has increased to the amplifier as well so the colors don't have to be driven as hard which means uh, the brightness doesn't have to be uh, set so high and since it doesn't have to be set so high uh, this thing doesn't freak out when it's like full on so it, while it, this kinda had a secondary effect it wasn't actually intended to solve this issue but it did help right so this box is pretty much 
uh, a box without uh, having the sides warp severely. So this is good. Um, everything else looks okay. The colors look okay. I mean, I, I did uh, go back and adjust these. Uh, so these look good. They're brighter than before for sure. Um, so I think with the game, now it's gonna look a hell of a lot better. Again, games that have like, you know, full on brightness uh, may suffer. Those games may suffer, but um, games that don't, that have a, f a fair share of black should look pretty good. So um, I'm going to probably put on a game now. I'll put on that uh, Dragon, what is it? Uh, well, whatever, the shooter that was in here originally. I'll put that on and, and see what it looks like. Uh, I think uh, there should be a bit of an improvement there. So let's do that now. Okay, got the game hooked up games called Thunder Dragon um, yeah it uh, it looks good uh, well this area is is a bit dark so uh, maybe we'll go back to uh, this and uh, show you exactly what's going on with the with a different level but um, certainly everything looks sharp it's uh, uniform um, there are no issues with geometry so this is looking pretty good now uh, before the blue got really washed out um, but as you can see now it, the water is still actually pretty damn blue and the grass um, is quite quite a bit green as well it's actually believe it or not it's it's better looking on the camera than it is uh, just by looking at it with my eyes so uh, the, the camera may exaggerate the uh, the colors, but um, it is certainly a lot better than before. So that that there's no doubt about that. And as far as the warping goes, I think it did improve it a little bit. So uh, have a look at this. Whenever these guys throw a bomb, the, the screen used to warp like crazy. It still does, but ah, it's not bad. I would say that's like almost acceptable so you know what um i may just leave it like this i'm gonna uh, just have a, a for uh, another look at the circuit there uh the input circuit for the rgb uh, amplification see if i can figure out exactly what's going on there but definitely um definitely it isn't right i'm, I'm wondering whether bypassing those capacitors completely just basically shorting uh, shorting them and uh, allowing a DC signal to to come through that, that may be adequate or maybe even um, increasing the uh, the values yet again from like 220 to 470 I, I don't know I mean this there's got to be a reason why they're there um, and uh, I mean uh, many many TVs and monitors do have AC coupling so um, yeah I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's been designed this way, but certainly this did improve things quite a bit. So uh, I think I'm going to end this video uh, on this. And um, like I said, I'll probably have another look and then maybe make part three. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I think this is going to be it. So if you enjoy this uh, again, you know what to do. And uh, I'll see you all on the next one. And uh, since I've been working on this for quite a while, I'm actually going to have a game. So, let's this up and have a go at it. Okay, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. And uh, once again, I'll see you all on the next one. Bye now.